Hi there, and welcome to the 30 and 30 here on Our Wyoming Life. 30 videos throughout the entire month of April bringing you along for calving and so much more here on the ranch. Spitting a little bit of rain outside, only had one calf born today. And because things are slow and, and kind of cruddy outside and not a very good day for filming, I get a chance to come inside the shop and uh, answer an email that I get probably at least uh, once every couple days. And that is, how do you film on the ranch? What equipment do you use and uh, what technique techniques do you use to be able to, to bring us uh, into the fold? Now, I'm not a professional filmmaker, and a lot of the stuff that I do, I've just learned over the years, uh, just trial and error more than anything, and a lot of it is really what I like. And, uh, and being able to find people that like the same kind of thing that I do, that, that makes it a whole lot easier. So today we're gonna take a look at some of that equipment. Uh, we're gonna talk about how I use it and why. And hopefully, in the end, uh, you'll feel like uh, you've kind of uh, learned something or you're a little bit closer to how we do things here on Our Wyoming Life. Filming yourself, filming yourself, which is basically what my original thought was for this video to be able to show you guys how this happens, extremely difficult. Uh, unless I've got somebody following me around, filming me, filming, an episode of the 30 and 30, I can't do it. It's, it's almost impossible to do. So what I've managed to do, and, and the idea that I came up with was to hang out here in the shop and actually show you the equipment that I carry with me pretty much every day during the 30 and 30 so that I can make sure that I'm getting you guys um, all the goods because there's nothing worse than going out and having to deal with a, a calf that's, that, you, you know, needs to give, that, that needs a C-section to be born and you, know, you don't have a camera with you and it, and it never happened if it's not on film. So so the big thing for us is basically trying to come up with solutions to, to find easy ways to bring you guys into the fold. Uh, coming up, we have the 24-hour live stream that starts on May 1st, and that's where this little guy uh, actually came in. This is kind of the, the, the necessity as the mother of invention type of thing. And uh, this is a GoPro. This is kind of hobbled together. But what it starts out with is an OtterBox um, belt clip case and what that allows me to do and let me show you how it works because 99% actually 100% of the 24-hour live stream is actually brought to you by my phone um, which uh, I'm able to live stream from I had to figure out a way to make that work a little bit easier um, last year during the 24-hour live stream I used basically uh, just my I held my phone a lot of the times I think I did have some sort of weird clamp that I had uh, like a um, like a tripod clamp that I was able to put my phone in, but it really didn't work. It, it didn't hold on well. And having an otter box for me is actually a necessity because I'm always dropping my phone and throwing it around. So I thought there had to be a way to, to bring these two things together. And that's where I came with, up with this. Now this is an old otter box um, belt clip that I had. In fact, I have one here. <laughs> on my belt because I, I just carried around like that. So that is the, that's the new one. Uh, this is one I, that I modified to turn into um, basically a phone mount or a camera mount. Uh, so I'm able to take my, my phone, my camera phone, which I'm gonna use during the, during the live stream and I can clamp it right in to the belt clip just like it was on my belt. But replacing my belt now is a GoPro mount um, followed by another GoPro mount onto a swivel mount, which I'm not really sure if I like this very much because it does allow me to kind of turn um, things and, and swivel things around a little bit. It gives me a little bit of a range of motion if I need it, um, but I, I kind of think this might go away. And then it goes down to a Ulianzi um, battery bank. So I can charge this up, plug this into my phone, and then uh, be able to make sure that my phone doesn't die when it's running constantly for 24 hours, which didn't happen last year, although we did lose service here and there. Um, but uh, it, does, it does definitely help out. And then that's, that's actually hooked up to a regular uh, GoPro clamp, which you would see on the end of um, like a flexible gooseneck type of GoPro thing that I'll show you here in a few minutes when I get into my actual vlogging gear. But this is the piece of equipment that we're going to be using during the 24 hour live stream, which starts on May 1st. And this is what it is all going to come to you from. So um, I do like it. It's a lot more sturdy than, than what I had before. And if I do drop it or anything like that, it is protected. And uh, I think it'll work just fine. I'm pretty proud of that little guy, um, even though it does look like a, a Frankenstein type <laughs> type of thing. It does work really well and I can put it in the gator and it can bounce around and I've always got it with me. And this is something that I've used during the uh, 30 and 30 vlog because I'm able to throw it in the gator 
carry it underneath the seat if something's happening and I don't have uh, my main camera with me that I usually film on, um, I can really quickly throw this all together and uh, you know put this together and be able to catch footage of what I have because I always have my phone on me. So if you're looking at getting into vlogging or even um, telling stories through video, this is the most important piece of equipment you have because you have it with you all the time. All right, folks, now this is where things are gonna get a little weird for us today because I have to show you what I usually film on and how I'm gonna do that is by using my camera phone to actually show you uh, what I film on 99% uh, of the time when I'm filming for the vlog. And that's with a GoPro Hero 9. I just got it this year and I have to say it is a great camera. Now I turned off the light, which is right here, and we're gonna talk about that here in a few minutes. Uh, but this is the uh, GoPro Hero 9. It is a wonderful camera to uh, be able to, uh, to film on. Mostly, the big thing that I like about it is it has this front camera. So I can see what's going on uh, wherever the camera's pointed, even if it's pointed at me. And I can see where I'm in the frame and all that kind of good stuff. Um, on it though, we have what's known as the Media Mod. And that's an add-on to this camera. And what it gives us is a, a microphone here, uh, some different ports to be able to plug uh, another uh, microphone in here as well. And uh, gives us a what's called a cold shoe up here so we can attach other things, uh, other things to it. And a cold shoe over here, which I never use because it's in the way. So on this, uh, on this camera, this is the most important part, obviously. Uh, this is the camera. This is what gets us all the footage that we need. But there's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, it starts down at the bottom. Uh, this is a GoPro clamp. Once again, I really do like these gooseneck clamps. Uh, they do me well. Um, they can be a little bit loose, and you'll see it occasionally in a video where they'll start to kind of sag and and fall down, especially if I'm in the gator and they do that number, and then they're just looking at your crotch, which nobody wants to see. So <laughs> I do have to kind of pay attention to that. I really haven't found a way to tighten these up or any other type of, uh, any other type of, of uh, gooseneck type thing that works for me. Um, I'm still kind of digging into that. I'm a big fan of battery banks. So here we have another battery bank. This is a, uh, I've tried different types. This is a Suptig uh, battery bank. So uh, if I turn that on, you can see that it's got juice in it and I can actually plug that directly from this side out of here and back into the camera. So uh, that gives me basically unlimited power. Uh, and I think this battery bank will run this camera for about nine hours. That is great uh, for me. The other thing that we have is right up here. Now this is the light that I was talking about um, that I turned off earlier. I'm gonna turn it on now if I can remember where the switch is back there. And this is the light uh, that I've got on this camera and this definitely helps out. This is a relatively new addition um, and I think that it makes all the difference. If uh, here, here I am with the light and I'm gonna turn it off and there I am without the light. So obviously a lot of difference um, in, the, uh, in the quality of the, of the footage there. And then the other thing that we have on here, I'll turn off the light so we're not all blinded, um, is this little jobber. And this is actually uh, a remote microphone receiver. And that links back, and we're back around to this little guy. Which, uh, which I wear on my person uh, pretty much all the time, especially over the last month. And I'm able to, uh, to send a signal directly from here to there. Now I've had different ways, I'm sorry about that. I've had other ways of doing this and uh, making this whole thing work. I'm gonna go back to the other camera, and turn on the light so that you can see another piece of equipment that I've used in the past. Audio to me is probably one of the most important things when it comes to video. Um, not everybody watches the video. 20, you know, the whole time. I think people are looking away, their, you know, their phone rings, they look down at their phone, they're answering emails, whatever they're doing. And being able to have a video that has strong audio with it um, is key to holding people's attention when they're not looking at the screen. If there's, if the audio is crappy, I think you're going to lose people uh, way faster. And I've learned that throughout videos. I've had videos where we've had audio that's just horrible. And usually that's my own fault uh, when I get into editing and I miss something or I'm using just the camera's microphone, uh, which can make a big difference. Let's take a look at that. Uh, so this is obviously with, uh, with me talking um, through the what's called a Rode Wireless Go mic, and that's the one that I showed you that hooked up to this camera. But if I unplug it, 
the audio changes completely and you can really kind of hear you can, I think you can hear the difference and then we switch it back to that audio this is the audio from the microphone again. So huge difference to me anyway, I can definitely tell the difference. And I know if I can tell the difference, other people can tell the difference. And even if they don't know why they can tell the difference or why it sounds weird, um, people, they're subconsciously, they're gonna figure that out. So um, they're definitely gonna kind of tap out a little bit quicker than if um, you uh, take a little bit extra steps and really, really try to manage your audio and make it sound as good as possible. So. The other thing, I guess I didn't tell you everything about this light. Um, we're gonna go back to the light just for one second. Uh, the light here itself, this is uh, another Ulianzi light. Aluzi, Alu uh, you can read it for yourself. Ulanzi, uh, Ulanzi, there we go. Um, this light actually has different powers on it. So depending on where I'm at, I could use different levels of light to uh, either blind myself or completely drown myself out. Uh, or make myself look better, whichever it may be. Or even if I'm in filming a calf, and I think this is where the light um, really came in handy was when I was filming calves in the barn. And it was, it's black in there, it's dark, it's hard to see a black cow, and uh, the light helps out immensely uh, with that also. So uh, the other thing about audio is you don't have to go crazy with it. Um, this is actually just a little tiny audio recorder that you can wear. I used this thing for years uh, or something like it. I actually had a cheaper model, cheaper version of this for a long time. And uh, recording audio, and then you had to sync it back um, to your video, which is why you see uh, in movies, they have the clapboard, you know? So uh, uh, before almost every everything I was filming, I was clapping so that I had a place to sync up audio with video using the wireless go uh, along with the gopro with the media mount so i can plug the microphone directly into the gopro now i don't need to sync anything saves me a huge amount of time and uh, coming into the 30 and 30 you have no idea how much that helps because syncing audio would really take me at least an hour maybe an hour and a half to two hours uh, every single night to sync audio with video now i could skip that step and get to bed just a just a little bit earlier so very, very happy about that. The other thing that we use a lot during the uh, 30 and 30 and a lot during all of our videos throughout the year, whether or not we're filming every single day of the week, is our drones. Now, our drones, <laughs> Aaron, they're the bane of Aaron's existence. Uh, these drones, I can tell you this, this is the drone that I use now. This is, this is my go-to drone. All these other drones, they don't work or they're busted for some reason, but I thought it'd be fun to get them out. And really, I just kind of wanted to, uh, I just kind of wanted to drive Erin crazy when she walked through the shop and she saw all these drones sitting here because she actually made a comment just a few minutes ago that she's pretty sure uh, I started doing YouTube as an excuse to buy drones. And I do like flying them. It's a lot of fun. We're going to take one out. We're going to take it up and I'm going to show you um, kind of how it works, but it is cool to be able to to get those shots and those angles that you would never be able to see uh, in any other way. So I'm going to talk a really quickly about some of these old drones that we've used over the years. Um, I got to tell you, and I'm gonna, I got these things weren't cheap back when I started. Now this was the very first drone. I actually got this drone um, before I started YouTube. Uh, I had a small side business. Uh, where I was going around and filming um, whatever I could from the air. I was filming uh, corn mazes for folks and making little videos of that. I was also, um, had a friend of ours that was, that was a house builder and uh, I would take video of the stages of the houses that he was building. So uh, that's where that drone came in handy. This drone um, basically went out of commission because of advances in technology. Um, this drone actually used a Wi-Fi. That's what this box is on here. Uh, it used Wi-Fi, uh, which only had a limited range. Uh, GoPro, or not GoPro, but DJI, who makes these drones, uh, changed their technology. And uh, eventually I graduated up to this drone, which is the Phantom, I don't know which one it is, it just says Phantom Standard on it, probably Phantom 2, I'm not sure. But uh, this, is, this is the drone that I graduated to at that point. This is the drone that got hit by hail and destroyed uh, while we were filming during haying a couple of years ago. Um, it still somewhat works. If I do need a drone that I need to go back on, I can clean this one up and get it out there. Uh, the problem is that because of the damage that it suffered um, with from the hail, 
the same problem as this one. The range really went down. I can probably only get about 100 yards away from this thing uh, before I lose the signal and it decides to uh, cause problems. So when this drone went down, when this one died, I thought, what the heck? We're gonna get a drone that's gonna be great for me because I thought this one would be the savior of all drones. So this drone is the DJI Air. Uh, it's very, very small. It uh, weighs 250 grams. It's a very, very tiny little drone. Uh, the problem is that the wind blows in Wyoming, if you, have, if you weren't aware, and this thing really doesn't do that well in the wind. So basically what happened, um, this thing crashed and, and this, this part broke off, which is one of the landing gear. I think I glued it a couple of times. Um, it just never seemed to stay together. And I think that when this broke, there's a sensor in here that then, because it was moving when I was flying it, um, would cause even more problems and actually uh, caused me to crash quite a few other times. And eventually this drone uh, was completely done for. Uh, Aaron hates drones because they're kind of uh, um, one and done in an effect. I mean, they can't, there's not really a whole lot of repairing to these. Technology moves so fast that even like our older drones, like we probably could get them repaired and, and put back as good as new, but they aren't gonna be as great as the new drone that we have. Now I say this is a great drone now, <laughs> ask me in six months, we'll see. The drone that I speak of is this one. This is our DJI. If you notice, there's a theme here. This is the Mavic Air 2. Now the DJI makes a, a higher end drone than this, obviously. Um, this is what we could afford, but it, it's turned out that it actually does pretty much everything that I need it to do. And uh, that comes down to, you know, I need a drone that can fly, obviously. I need a drone that can take video. It takes very nice video. I'm not gonna get all technical on you. But I also need a drone that can kind of take care of itself, right? Because I'm out um, doing, God knows what, and I'm not paying attention to the drone all the time. This drone has a follow me feature, so I can set it up to follow me in a vehicle. I can set it to, uh, to stay 300 feet and 400 feet in the air, and it, and it does that. Um, it also has uh, some new things that I just learned about here uh, just the other day. It has an aircraft avoidance, so if an aircraft flies into the area, it tells me, and I don't have to worry about crashing into another plane. So the other cool thing about it is, if you notice with all these other drones up here, and I don't even know where the remote is for this drone. It's somewhere. Um, there's a remote here, there's a remote here. None of these remotes have screens on them. You had to use your phone, which would clamp into here, or it would clamp into here. You had to actually use your phone to be able to see where you're flying, what you're doing, what you're recording. The newest thing here in our arsenal is a remote control that actually has a screen on it. It's basically a remote control with a phone built into it. So I'm able to fly the drone. I don't have to use my phone. If my phone rings, the drone doesn't crash, which is great. Um, and this thing is very, very handy uh, to be able to fly with. So I figured we would wrap things up. I mean, this is pretty much what we use on a daily basis to be able to bring you the vlog. And I, I thought I'd wrap things up by, by taking the drone out and kind of showing you what it's like to, to, to fly and to film with the drone. Um, it's gonna be something that's actually gonna be featured at this year's Ranch Roundup, and that's what made me think of doing this. Every year we have our Ranch Roundup, uh, which is a, a get together here on the ranch. Uh, you can buy tickets now, they're available online at ourwyomonglife.com. Happens at the end of June, and uh, we're, we're strategically located between uh, Mount Rushmore and Yellowstone. So if you have a vacation coming up, it's a great way to kind of build it into your vacation. And you can come to the ranch and you can hang out for the weekend with, uh, with me and Aaron and the kids and our moderators and a bunch of other subscribers. Uh, our sponsors are here. You get a chance to drive the Gator with the wheels on it. You can drive a BCS tractor. Um, hopefully we'll have some John Deere tractors here that you'll be able to check out. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's a great way to spend a weekend and, and hang out with some folks that are very like-minded, just like you. One of our things that we're doing this year at Ranch Roundup is a chance to actually experience the drone. Uh, we are gonna have a drone theater, uh, a big screen, not sure how big yet, but a screen where our pilots will fly the drone out over the ranch, even 
probably better drones than this one. Fly them out over the ranch where you can actually sit and watch the experience of flying out um, out onto the ranch and, and viewing, looking at the cows and the calves and, and uh, you know, just getting a perspective that, that very few uh, people get aside from renting a Cessna. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a sneak preview into that today because we're gonna take this drone out for a little flight. Um, one of the things that I do like about this drone is that when I do need to fly it, when I need to jump into it, <laughs> literally, not literally, figuratively, jump into the drone and take off because I've got something going on. I can just turn this thing on. I can grab the other remote. I don't have to mess around with my phone. I don't have to link anything. I don't have to do any of that jazz. I can just power up the remote and away we go. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see exactly what I'm seeing here on my screen, but I'm going to try to share with you as much as possible as we get this bad boy up and going. Guys, thank you very much for hanging out with us today. It really has been a whole lot of fun. I, I kind of worried about doing this video because I wasn't sure about how um, best to show you guys the equipment that goes in to bringing you guys the, uh, the 30 and 30 and even our regular videos. But I hope that uh, this kind of 
gives you a little bit of insight uh, on, on what's going on behind the scenes. I hope to be able to do a few more behind the scenes type videos. I need to find a cameraman to, uh, to follow me around and, and uh, be able to actually do a real behind the scenes type of videos. But this shows you some of the equipment that goes into it and uh, all the stuff that Aaron hates because it all costs money, guys. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. We'll see you tomorrow as we get back into ranching. Calving continues. We also uh, are gonna be wrapping up the 30 and 30 here before too long with our very special, and thanks to Mackenzie and with her help, the Cattle Award Show coming up as well along with the 24 hour live stream. It's all on the way on our Wyoming Life. Have a great night, guys. We'll see you next time.